Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500. Inflation is roaring, the Federal Reserve is determined to fight it. The Fed has historically been known to be responsible for over tightening and creating big global downturns, big recessions. Uh, that are accompanied with massive bear markets. And just today we are seeing the fastest rate hike cycle that we've seen in decades. A lot of people are worried about a big downturn that's ahead, that the Federal Reserve is potentially making a mistake and we should be expecting an imminent hard landing. In fact, most people disagree with where the market currently is right now. If you were asked a year ago, where the market would be considering everything that's happening, uh, inflation almost reaching 10%, uh, the Fed openly talking about the fact that they want to see the stock market go lower when the Federal Reserve, in fact, has often been considered the single biggest driver uh, of the 2009 to 2021 bull run. You would have probably said that the market would be down 50%, even more, that a large part of this QE fueled secular bull run that's happened since 2009 would be retraced by now, that the market would be pricing that in. But if we take a look at where the market was uh, just a year ago in September right here, we were just eight to 9% above current levels. So what will it take for the market to go down? Are the headwinds that we are seeing today really enough to take the market into a massive bear market and end uh, the secular bull run that we've seen since 2009 that really you you can't make the case has ended just yet. That's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. And that's exactly what we cover multiple times a week on this channel. So if you are new here and you're interested in following these crazy markets with us, uh, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you enjoy this episode, make sure to click on that like button. It really uh, helps us out. So in the last video, we discussed a very important topic and that is this breadth thrust here that we had uh, during the rally where we saw the percentage of stocks on the S&P 500 that are trending above their 50 day moving average. We saw that indicator move from an extremely low level at around 0% to 90% in a straight line that just doesn't happen uh, very often and it's often associated with the beginning of bull runs. Now, if you saw that video, uh, you'll know that 3,900 points is the key level that's gonna determine the bullish structure on the S&P 500, including whether or not this breadth thrust that we saw throughout the rally, whether that gets invalidated. What we're gonna cover in this episode is what happens if that does get invalidated. Does that mean we're going into a massive bear market? Has that happened in the past before where an invalidation of this breadth thrust signals triggers a massive bear market? That's, I think, a very important question to answer and to uh, know what kind of risk we're dealing with if we do get an invalidation of that breadth thrust. Does that mean that the market is completely reconsidering what happened here, which is a signal that you typically don't get during a bear market, right? You don't see those red dots during the 2008 financial crisis or during the dot-com crash. You just don't see that type of conviction that we got in 2022. So let's dive into the data, the historical data and what it's currently saying. And, and the indicator we're going to use today is the NYSE McClellan summation index. That's also a measure of the breadth of the market. And you can see if I zoom in here, uh, what happened to the breadth on this indicator, it went from a low reading to a high reading from let's say minus 800 to around 800 in one go very rapid move up and so i put a vertical line every time that has happened going back to 1965 and these are the results so you can see the data set is pretty impressive it's very very impressive it happens systematically right before major runs in the market. 2020, 2019, 2009, 2003, 1990 here. Every time before major moves up in the market, you get this type of signal. In fact, you can even include this one here that fell just shy of the cutoff that I put in 
uh, but you could consider this a breadth thrust type of look in 2016 that occurred right here before a three year bull run on the market. So out of 15 readings here, 15 readings, you had one failure. And you can go back to see the past reading, the readings that happened further in history, even during this vicious secular bear market, right in between 1966 and 1983, the market went nowhere. It was extremely volatile. Even throughout that period, this signal was incredibly successful, marking again, the beginning of major bull runs. And you know, this is not a prediction of what's going to happen, right? It's just highlighting the fact that you get this type of market behavior after major bottoms in the market. And you can see there was one exception, one big, big exception here. And we're going to focus on that in this video, uh, because I do think it's important to fully understand whether we can rule that out. In 1973, you had a breadth thrust signal right here that occurred at the very top of a bear market rally. And then the market proceeded to move down. I believe that was a 40% drop from that reading. So this is something we want to avoid. And we want to know whether this could happen today. Why did that fail? At the first glance, 1973 was a high inflation period where the Federal Reserve was uh, hiking aggressively uh, into a downturn. And so I know a lot of you are going to say, Oh, well, this is exactly like 1973. And so it's not a surprise that we're seeing the same reading today than what we saw in 1973. And that's actually proof that we should see this massive uh, drop in the market right now. Now don't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what happened here. So let's go back in history and see what happened in 1973 here October of 1973 was uh, where the breadth thrust signal was triggered. You can see very, very powerful move up here. And in fact, you can see the structure of the market back here was pretty similar to what we've seen today. We had around a 20% drop in the market from the all time high that looked pretty controlled, pretty smooth, no huge panic drops. Uh, and then right here, a powerful 13% move up. And this was actually a retracement that went further than the 50% retracement level. I know at one point there was uh, a big rumor going around that if the market went past the 50% retracement level, that means it's not a bear market rally. Well, this is a perfect example of when a bear market rally went past the 50% retracement level, which is exactly what happened today uh, with the market retracing all the way to the 61.8 retracement level before reversing. So at a first glance, technically, and from a macro standpoint, you could say that October 1973 is very, very similar to August of 2022. Now let's observe what happened to oil prices in October of 1973. Oil prices after the bear market rally after the breadth thrust signal right here, oil prices went from $4, you can see there on the left hand side on the y axis, just above $4 all the way to $10. So oil prices more than doubled uh, in just a couple of months here between October of 1973, after the breadth thrust signal and January of 1974. So the way I'm interpreting this and the way I'm looking at this is that the breadth thrust signal was triggered before the famous oil shock of 1973. The oil shock was the primary cause for the inflation that followed in the years that came after it was a huge supply shock. So even though the economy was already slowing down by then you had this huge supply shock that was not expected by the market that created this massive pressure on the consumer in addition to the slowdown, this huge inflationary shock. And in fact, the market didn't bottom until uh, the year on year inflation rate topped, right? And almost perfectly coincided with the bottom of the bear market. The way I'm looking at this is that this breadth thrust signal was invalidated because of an external geopolitical event that created a supply shock that did impact the economy in a big, big way. And that supply shock occurred after the breadth thrust. If you'd never had the oil shock of 1973, perhaps that breadth thrust would have played out for another rally. And maybe the market would have topped a few months later or a couple of years later. That's a substantially different situation to what we have today, at least in our opinion. Of course, you can leave a comment down below telling us what you think and how you're interpreting this. But in 2022, we did have an oil shock. We did have a smaller oil shock 
because of the war in Ukraine, where prices went from uh, around seventy dollars all the way to one hundred and twenty dollars, right? Almost a doubling in the price. And following that, you had a pretty aggressive decline in the market. But the point is that the breadth thrust that we got throughout the summer here that came after the oil shock. So unless you have another big black swan event that appears, there isn't much evidence here that suggests that we are similar to 1973 and that we should be expecting this massive bear market. The 3,900 point level could be broken down, right? And if we take a look at the inverse of the two year yield, for example, right, that's a good illustration of why rallies have failed throughout 2022. It's been this tightening of financial conditions, the two year yield is still tightening. That's the bearish case. It's slowed down quite a bit compared to what we saw throughout the beginning of 2022. Uh, right, you're clearly seeing a slowdown, but it's still heading in the same direction. Now in the near term, we do have a very important bullish technical structure here, right? The uh, trend line that connects these two lows, uh, we have the 61.8 retracement level uh, that is right here at around 3,900 points. If that gets broken, you start to lose the short term bullish technical structures and the market begins to get more vulnerable to a larger dip. In fact, you do still have this unresolved uh, gap that you can call an air pocket around between around 3,700 points and 3,400 points uh, at the COVID peak. If you start to lose these structures, and this is something that we discussed in the last YouTube video, it does significantly decrease the odds that the market is going to continue higher in the short term. And so you could suspect that uh, this bearish trend that we've seen and make a retest of the low and probably an undercut and a fill of the zone uh, very likely. That's short term trading, short term stuff, looking out six to 12 months, uh, this type of move really doesn't doesn't end up making a difference unless you take advantage of that opportunity when it comes. Now down the road, the Fed funds rate, the interest rate and the Federal Reserve rising so quickly can have devastating impact, right? And we saw that throughout 2008, the Fed kept rates too high for too long. And that eventually materialized into a breakdown of the financial system. We've only seen the very beginning of the tightening cycle, right? If you compare that to the rate shock of 2005, right here, you know, people were very worried about the Fed here and the fact that uh, economic activity was uh, slowing down despite the fact that the Federal Reserve was hiking. Lots of concerns around the fact that the Fed was tightening into a slowdown and yet the market continued to rise. Now that's about all I wanted to say in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.